What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Landlord Society podcast. I'm Charlie. You're here with HDK, and we help Australians replace their income through the Landlord Academy. And today in this episode, we're talking about some property predictions through Australia through the next three to five years, how to navigate this boom, and what locations specifically that we think have a lot of potential and opportunity for people just like yourselves. HD, run us through some of the overall numbers and outlooks that you've got for us. Awesome. Let's get into it. Fantastic. I mean, Charlie, this is this is stuff that we talk about every day, pretty much. It's, it is. You and I literally, I, I don't think we've actually skipped a day of not talking about this I don't even get future. sick of it though. It's, I kind of love it. Dude, exactly, bro. It's, it's Living and breathing, it's like a nice, it's like fresh oxygen. Exactly right. Property is fresh oxygen. <laughs> I've had genuinely yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you want some of that fresh oxygen, um, check us out on uh, on Instagram. Give us, drop us a follow. Yep, the Landlord You've, Society. Absolutely. You'll find a lot of value. And um, this is something that we've actually been consistently sharing and the information that we've been sharing with um, with people within our Discord community. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is something We drop that, nuggets every time we come across something that we feel is valuable. Yeah, exactly right. And and it's been, I, I genuinely see that people are reacting to this and they're, they're, they're absolutely loving it. Um. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to look at some of the key metrics um, as we go and um, and just sort of, I'm just want to, I'm just going to point out some of the interesting things that I have come across, which yeah. will hopefully the listeners will actually agree with that as well. And, and if these numbers don't excite you, you have no emotions. Well, basically. caution, yeah. <laughs> caution, because you may experience FOMO during this episode. <laughs> big, big caution there, yeah. big caution there. But the, the good thing about the Australian property market right now is that there is there is bright hope for the future. And, mm. you know, it is the future that we're looking into, not, ju- not just the past. The past has been great. Yeah. Right? Yep. For those of you who've made an entry over the last, you know, year or two, I mean, at, at any point in time, in the past, you would have done actually quite well until now, which is quite yep. quite awesome yep. results to see. Yep. Some of you have may have performed really well. Some of you have, may have performed a little bit less. But the fact is, property investors are absolute winners in the Australian society right now, especially when done right. Exactly. You know, unaffordability is just one side of the coin. Affordability uh. in the right strategy is the other side of the coin. That's where the opportunity lies. Mm-mm. And yeah. Exactly right. I mean, the words like unaffordability and rental crisis and all there's actually yeah. music to the landlord yeah. is, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yep. not to sort of pry in a saw that you might have or anything like that, but that's just yeah. the side of the coin that you have to decide to be in early on to be able to um, be on the right side of the coin. But yeah. to win yeah. yeah, exactly right. And there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of juice in the market, if I can put it that way, yeah. with the numbers that we're seeing. And so we're really excited to share that. Now, um, first and foremost, rents. Rents have gone up across the board. Massively so. And if you actually zoom out on the graph, and I've got this graph right in front of me, and we're looking at data like uh, Adelaide, for example, in 2015, the median asking rent for any sort of home or whatever in- Homes or units? Just just homes, just okay, homes. Yep. Adelaide was around 300 in the low ends of 300. Low ends of 300. So this is combined dwellings, dwellings. a week. Yeah, dwellings. dwellings yeah, so right? houses and units combined. Yeah. Yep. And then in 2020, we saw that increase to about the high 300. So high pretty 300, steady yep. increase over about five years, right? So that, that accounts for about- you know, about thirty percent. Um, you know, along along the along about. Five this is years. just Adelaide, isn't it? Just Adelaide. Yeah. And what we see in two thousand and twenty-four, we've actually flipped Melbourne. Flipped Melbourne. That's in terms crazy. Of, in terms of median rent, median asking rent, just just on a tiny basis, and I think that's okay. predominantly because Adelaide probably has more um, houses than apartments than Melbourne mm, does. Mm. So the apartments are a bit cheaper as well. But we are yeah, now sitting at yeah. have a guess five hundred and. Ten dollars a week, Jesus. So yeah. that's for a median, what three bedroom dwelling? Yeah, well, just, it's just, just, just a regular a dwelling, dwelling, a median asking rent across yep. the entire state, right? Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's that's quite crazy. Now, if we look at Perth, for example, right? Perth uh, in two thousand and twenty was sitting at three fifty, mid three hundreds. Yep. Two thousand twenty, four years later, is now sitting at six hundred dollars a week median rent, almost in Perth, double. Yeah, doubled in four years time in rent. Far out. So, you know, the, the charts sort of go like this. It goes, and then it just launches off. Yep. Launches so, people, off. so it's like property prices have increased, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, there's got to be some downside to that. But, but, but what if, you know, mm. prices increase? Well, yes, sure, interest rates are going to go up. Mm. Sure. Mm. But the demand for rent seems to be keeping up with, or in this case, outpacing mm. that increase. Exactly right. And, yeah. and, it's, and it, you know, people look at 
people look at growth in property prices, but they don't actually look at the growth in rental prices. Yeah. The growth in rental yeah. prices are actually a lot more um a lot more, I guess, bankable, I'd say. That's what helps you maintain a portfolio growing. Exactly right. Growing. And then it yeah. ends up being ends up rewarding you back in, in a form of a lifestyle, right? At the end at the end of the day. So, you know, when when people do their calculation, they look at, oh, how much money could I make out of this property? The rental's gonna be this today. But they also gotta factor in two things. One, the interest rate that's gonna drop next year. And then the and then the, the the rental income that's going to increase next year. Most suburbs at the moment are probably going to experience about ten, easily ten to fifteen percent uh, rental increases. Yeah. And that's not a lot of increase. Three hundred dollars a week is going to become three thirty mm. next year. I mean, that's pretty standard. And for those of you who are living in rentals at the moment, paying, well, you know, God bless you, three hundred dollars a week right now. Mm. Next year, most likely going to turn into three thirty, if not more. Even single rooms, like an ensuite. Mm. People who might have a few rooms in your house you want to rent out, mm -hmm. you're going to be creative with your cash flow. Yeah. Rent out a spare room. Yeah. 300 bucks a week seems to be a, an average price that you would be able to charge for, for a proper room, you know? For a proper room. For exactly a proper right. room, not a sh little shitty box. Yeah, yeah. But like an actual nice room, maybe furnished. Mm. Yeah. An yeah. ensuite, even more than that. You yeah. Know, a nice, spacious ensuite that's livable. Exactly right. Yeah. So, I mean, the rental demand has gone up like crazy. The biggest demand that we've seen is uh, is uh, Sydney, of course. Oh, um, yeah. Yep. Sydney has gone from about, uh, in 2022, median of about $500 a week to now $700 a week. So that's less of a relative increase mm. than Adelaide, in yeah, terms yeah. Of like percentage wise, but that's I right. think it's about the same in terms of dollar figure. Yeah, so yeah. basically all these dots and those the, the graph is basically trending up. And what that means is that we've got a lot of renters in the market. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I suspect that this has come predominantly from uh, immigrants. Immigration, immigration. Yeah. Back to that whole lack of supply amongst dwellings in Australia. Exactly yeah. right. And, the, and in terms of immigration that we're seeing right now, um, Albanese government tried to actually reduce the immigration down from 510,000 immigrants per year to about 375,000 per year. Okay. They tried that yep. for whatever reason. And I don't really care about the ad agenda. I just care about the data. Yeah, just right? to totally objective. The yep. Totally objective. Yep. This is this is not a political podcast. This is an investor's podcast. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, but the data actually came in at 550,000. Right. Yeah. So 550,000 immigrants, that sort of roughly works out to about 2,000 immigrants per day over the course of the last financial year, right? That's that's a lot. That's a lot of immigrants. There's a lot. There's a lot of immigrants. And that has ended up with a housing deficit, right? Oh, actually, before we talk about deficit, those people predominantly are not property buyers. No. They're not, no, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're, immigrants, not. they're not there yet. You know what I mean? These are yeah. immigrants we're talking about. Yeah, a lot of them, many of them could be millionaires because Australia does have that, you know, Hey, buy your way into Australia ticket, right? Yeah. But that's a that's a minority. So majority of them would not be millionaires, and they probably don't understand the Australian property landscape. Not quite ready to buy as yet. Yeah. These are the types of people that will be there. So they're not buying property straight away. Where are they going? Boom, rents straight mm, away. Straight to the rental market. Straight to the rental market. Not to mention Australians now suffering on affordability. So what do Australians choose to do now? They want to jump into rents again. Mm. Right, but by doing that, rental prices increase. Rental prices increase, then interest rates increase. Interest rate increase, then property price will increase as well. It can actually be that could be the chain reaction that we see as well, because yeah. it's at the end of the day lining the pockets of the landlords, and that's what yeah. the bank wants to take away from the landlords yeah. as well. So, yeah. uh, but having said that, the landlords are still protected, right? It's the it's the bottom end of this chart that are struggling, mm -hmm. not the landlords, and definitely not the banks. No. Okay. So landlords and banks are still making money. They're sitting pretty, but everything else just is falling into place. But let's talk about the population increase and the demand that we have right now. Well, currently there is a Whoa, whoa, hold up, Landlord Society. Are you sick and tired of the rat race and you want to start building wealth with property and generate passive income? Then come and drop us a follow on Instagram and DM us the word landlord. The word what, Charlie? The word landlord, like the Landlord Society. Okay, wait, Charles, what's our Instagram handle again? At landlord.society. You heard him, everybody. DM us the word landlord to our Instagram to learn more about property investing. Now back to the podcast. A whopping 200,000 dwelling shortage across Australia right now. Gee whiz, yes. That's a lot. That's uh, huge. Yeah. And, and in and fact, it might not seem like a lot, 200,000, when there's what, 20 million people in Australia, 24 million people in Australia? Yeah. 
but that's enough to drive a huge deficit mm -hmm. in the amount of people versus the amount of dwellings that are available for the people to purchase. But at the moment, the dwelling commenced data, according to ABS, in 2015 was sitting around about that 60,000 houses per quarter. Right. Now, we're down from there to about 37,000 houses per quarter. Mm. That's not a lot. How many quarters will have to pass to be able to fulfill that 200,000 deficit? Yeah, a lot, of quarters. a lot of quarters. How many years is that going to pan out to be? Exactly right. And yeah. as the years pan out, would the deficit stay the same? Or would or it just increase chase it? even more? Would, yeah. you, would it just be a pace? You know, it's a cat and mouse game yeah. all over again. Yep. Currently, what's really putting the spanner in the works of dwellings being commenced and all the building constructions to continue is the lack of supply of laborers. Hmm. Right, well, and material labor. costs. Material costs is another thing. But before yeah. we talk about the material costs, even if we have mountains of materials, if we've got no builders and people actually coming out to the site and hammering away, mm. it's no good. Tradies are a def at, a, at a deficit of 90,000 tradies. Yeah. Nine, big, we big need 90, there's a big shortage. Think about it. Why do the Aus Australian government increase immigration? Because we have a shortage on labor, on important things like trades. Yeah. On important things like every other area, medicos and, and you know, the, yep. the nursing, the, the caring industry. So for it's trying to stimulate the economy. Yeah. And that's why Australia opens up the doors because yep. Australians here don't want to be doing these kind of jobs. So what do they do? They, they open up the doors to get these people in. Yeah. Right. Out of the 500,000 people that are coming in, some of them will be teachers, engineers, doctors. Some of them will be mechanics. Some of them will be tradies. Yeah, tradies. Yeah, Yeah, but out of the 600,000 people that came in, one sixth of them cannot be all tradies. Mm. And even if they are, they will need some time for training and they should get there. So that's the reason why the doors are open. Doors are open and the population flooded in and then there's a deficit again. So this deficit isn't going away anytime soon. So what does that say about supply and demand in Australia in property? The supply is dwindling. Yeah. And it can't catch up to the demand, which inevitably- It's struggling to catch up with the demand. Exactly, right, which inevitably has increased. So what yeah. we've actually seen is a graph now. This is so interesting, okay? We have two lines, which was published on social media and of course on our Discord as well. So if you're interested in joining that, send us a DM or you guys know what to do. Check us out on the social yeah, pipes. You, yeah. know, you know what to do. They know the drill. Exactly, they know the drill. In- we're looking at data from 2015 until 2023. Yep. That obviously encompasses COVID, yep. right? Yeah. But I want to ask the general listeners, what happened to property prices before COVID? Was it increasing or decreasing? They were increasing. They were increasing. Easy. Easy answer. What happened to property prices after COVID? They were also increasing, violently increasing yep. post-COVID. Anyone that bought any property in COVID, like, Congratulations. You guys, you know, won the lottery with property. Yeah. Absolutely creamy. Now, we have had a population growth in the thousands. So, you know, you know, we, we're seeing a and let's say the population growth is a blue line and then the dwelling approvals is the orange line. The population growth always sat above the dwelling approvals. So you know, the growth is happening, population growth is happening, demand is is, is coming in at a faster pace than supply that's why properties were increasing and the ratio there was that you would have about 1.4 people increase to one room in a house mm. that's what it used to be so we would we would be just under supply in the market by a factor of about you know 60 percent or so that's what it was sort of working out towards at the point in time of COVID, obviously the population increase has dipped to its lowest, right? And that's when we were producing more houses than there were people, mm. but only for a very short period of time. And after that, boom, spiked up. You know why it spiked up? Because people started moving into Australia because during COVID, what country handled it the best out of all the other? I mean, Australians will complain on and on and on. Oh like, yeah, come on. the whole thing. Yeah, but you know, Australia is a pretty awesome first world country. You know what I mean? Yeah. People who's got money, a bit of money, oh, yeah. would yeah, love yeah. to live here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It and seems bad when you're in it, but then when you look at the rest of the world, yeah. oh my god, We are very much very blessed lucky. here. Yeah. Very much blessed. And I think we've uh, released some statistics on that with the million millionaire migrations. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yep. that's the, Australia. Yeah, that's the graph that that's that's the the visual representation that shows that um, out of all the countries in the world, Australia is the best at attracting millionaires, right? So mm -hmm. if you become rich, the first place people want to go to is Australia. Yeah. And it's also interesting to see that it beat out places like Singapore, 
beat out places like Dubai, yeah. UAE, and yeah. like you know, it, it, it was it was pretty crazy. Places that US, in. you know, you think are wealthy, well-off countries to be. Mm-mm, that's right. So, what that number has changed into, right? The 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 new people to dwelling ratio, if you like, new people to dwelling housing, right? Ratio is there are four people. Coming to Australia, right, and moving into Australia, or you know, being born out of Australia, right, to one room. Really? Yes. So that ratio used to be one point four. Now the ratio is sitting at four. Four. Far out. So the demand and supply is completely stripped. Yeah. At the moment, it's completely stripped. So the prediction for the future of Australian property is, it's going to get crazier. Mm. Mm. It's going to get crazier. Unless yeah. we come up with a way as Australians to just meet that demand like crazy, like just just you know increase the output of you know producing homes, and that means yeah. the councils would have to completely open up their you know their their uh, their approval guidelines to say yes, they would. build as many houses as you want here. The right? government would also have to stimulus like give stimulus to tradies or, or some of some kind, maybe so, of some kinds, right? Yeah. Things like, you know, on the surface of it, you know, you know, this is where I think, you know, government's sort of doing a bit of a poor job is like, you know, on the surface of it, things like, oh, it's too expensive. So let's, you know, get rid of, you know, uh, stamp duty and things like that, which we discussed in our previous yeah, we episode, did, yeah. you know, in, in things like, um, in things like certain properties. It's in, a very in, small pool so of the bigger picture. Not only that, it's actually doing the opposite. The True, prices are just driving gonna, demand yeah, yeah, just drive just drive the drama demand yeah. further. I mean, they're trying to fix it's a kick the can down the road kind of thing. Yeah. But the fundamental issue of the lack of supply is going to be there. But this issue should be an opportunity. Yeah. For property investors. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. So the prediction for two thousand and um, you know, for two thousand and five and beyond is that Australia has a lot of work to do when it comes to supply. Land is going to be in demand. Mm. Cities will expand. Population will grow. Right. Um, I uh, it's really also interesting to see that in e- the population of South Korea is double that of Australia nationally, and the <laughs> land is, is so crazy. small, right? So yeah. the the density of people living in Australia is actually quite low, uh, albeit Very low. it's yeah. the most the lowest in the world. Yeah, it's probably and, yeah. and albeit it's probably you know it's it's, it's populated at, around more so on the on the coastal sort of towns. Yeah, but more importantly. Uh, it's we, we could do with more population here. Yeah, absolutely do with more population here because of the the demand of labor that we need and and things like that. And mm. look, that might sound like we're pushing an agenda, but I'm saying to solve the supply issue, that's what will need to happen. As to the social ramifications of that, we're not going to make a comment on that. But yeah. from this point, see how all these solutions are very very radical, and Australia hasn't been particularly radical in terms of its policies and whatnot. Mm. And on those bases, I see that just from where we're going, there's got to be a massive squeeze on the amount of demand for Australian property and the supply of it as well. Meaning that if you're not in property now, if you think properties are expensive today, guess what? It's not going to get any At the end of the day, it's an asset. Exactly right. Um, I want to also make a quick comment on um, interest rates. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. interest rates, people think that it's all that, right? Let's hear it. Yeah. So let's hear it. I think it should be evident by now from from our conversation today that property prices have increased when interest rates are going up. Yeah. Right. COVID till now, people have done well. What happened during those times? Interest rates fell to zero. The cash rate fell to zero. But from there onwards, it went. It's up. increased. It increased massively. Yeah. But property prices also increased with during it. that time. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So it's like. When rates are going up, property prices are gonna increase. Yeah. Well, then what's and and let's let me ask you the other way: when interest rates go down, do property prices go up or down? They go up. They go up again. So yeah. regardless of interest rate, is a good topic to talk about, but it's not the only determinant factor. No way. Of it's all, the only determining factor is supply and demand, which encapsulates things like interest rates, exactly, and immigration, mm. and. Gentrification. Gentrification, affordability. Yeah. Mm. All of those things. Employment, unemployment. Mm. Exactly you right. You know, like a lot of factors, yeah. Exactly right. So I think it's more important that as property investors that we not shy away because of interest rates, but do actual proper research in identifying where the growth areas are. 
where the yeah. grow, what kind of pro- properties will actually grow and what kind of properties will accommodate what kind of population out there yeah. so that we know that we end up with an asset that's going to be in sort of pursuit by other people yeah does that make sense yeah. so i think i think that discussion is probably more appropriate in times like this at the end of the day if a bank approves you for a loan at these interest rates and you can beat it out with the growth or the rental yield or whatever you've got well then you're you're or you're pretty safe already australian you know australian banks are not the most aggressive in the world they're probably mm. more conservative so the fact that they've approved you and you can get a loan right now is probably a good idea and writing that interest rate I, even up and down is okay if the interest rates go up don't worry the the the, the rental demand will follow that yeah the rental if you've got a decent property yes. exactly if you've got a decent property yeah, that yeah. is obviously yep yeah. good good caveat there yeah. um and of course if the interest rates go down well guess what rent's not the, really going to go the down it's probably going to go up even further <laughs> it's going to go up even yeah. further so it's um uh, it it's what it's what in the financial world they call they they distinctly sort of classify assets as risk on and risk off assets. Yes, yeah. So risk real on estate ass- is typically risk off. Risk off, but yeah. the thing is, we're seeing a phenomenon where real estate is both risk on and off. Yeah, yeah. It's a good yep. thing to have when yeah. there's a lot. People have a lot of money out there. They they can be risky, and it's a good thing to have when people don't have a lot of money out there and they don't want to be risky. Yeah. So pretty exciting time to be investing into property at the moment, and yeah. um. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you subscribe and follow us. We'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Peace.